Good morning and welcome to our spiritual community and as well as our Sunday celebration service. My name is Reverend Richard Pacheco and as always I am grateful for you joining us here for the next 45 minutes or so. And I have been happy that we have been on this journey together for the seven spiritual laws of success. Today we tap into that last law and we kind of summarize what we have learned over time. So as always take this time while we're having this short discussion and Share it out to your friends, and if you happen to be home having coffee, invite some of your friends over to enjoy this with you live. If you're watching it later, share this out as well so that others can get the message as well as join us in the spiritual community. And as I said, we are working on the last of our spiritual laws, so I really hope that you take time and engage with us. And we don't want you to just be here and listen to us and, you know, um, just hear what we have to say, but we want you to actually go out and practice the things. That's why we have the discussion questions at the end. We want you to actually go out, do the thing, read the discussion questions, journal them for yourselves, look at how they change week to week, and then finally, once you put them into action, see what is working for you and give it time. Don't just quickly give up on it. And then put those continuously into action. And that's the point of moving in faith and strength and all our 12 powers is to make sure that we're staking to this journey. So talking about engaging, you know, we definitely want you guys to engage with us as well. If you haven't done so or wish to do so, you can go to our website at weesc.org and you can go there and give donations and to help us continue to build a video program, continue to bring in more tools, and help us put out more programming. One of our goals is to put out a children's segment that, w that may play before or after our service so that our children can be engaged with either the lesson of the day or a specific lesson we're working on. So that's our next goal, to get it out there online. And again, what the kids can watch from the comfort of their home. We want to move on to getting classes online. This has been a goal of mine for the longest, is to make sure that we have some maybe some self, um, how do I say, some self-directed training that you can do on your own and then we can discuss after if you need more assistance. But I know that that was one of the challenges was trying to get to classes and be engaging, but you kind of miss out because you know you do miss that camaraderie. But I, like I said, being someone who's constantly in different pro projects, I know what the time constraint is. We definitely want you to engage with us as becoming a volunteer as well, which you can do from your home, since we're online, do your bunny slippers, as I say. You know, whether it is you're requesting prayer or, you know, you want to volunteer, you want to tell us a little testimony about how what we've taught here has helped you grow, or you just want to drop a note, ask a question, but most importantly, you want to say, hey, Rev. Rich, I just want to see how I can help out. Well, just drop us a note by going to the Contact Us page on our website. Let us know. You also know how to reach me on Facebook as well. But we definitely, the more people and the more hands we have, the more better we can do. And as I said, engagement is very important. So how can you engage with us online? As I said, use the contact form. Invite friends over, share this out. Make sure you're listening and taking notes for every lesson. Make sure you're putting it into practice. You know, I have the honor of working with some of the, as I like to say, the OG of Unity, like a Reverend Thomas Thorpe. And, you know, I've worked with and spoken to people like Mark Hicks, who has done Unity, um, truthunity.net. Uh, you know, and these ha they have a, preth a plethora <laughs> of information to share. And that's the best part of this, that we become a community of sharing and caring and doing what we need to do. So as I said, this week we're ending the laws. But next week, stay tuned because our service is going to be a little bit different as we move into the flow of freedom. We just celebrated July 4th a couple of weeks ago. And we're ending our lesson today talking about dharma and destiny and things like that. So why not bridge over that flow of prosperity, which we will be working on next week. But our service will be more of a contemplative service. So you'll be engaging in meditation. You'll be engaging in sound bathing as well as our lesson. So pay attention today. Get your notes down and invite as many people on for next week's show. But now I'm going to let you go and get on with your experience.
Sunday, July 17th, 2022. Trust. Today we affirm, I place my trust in God. And our message reads, Few things are a greater comfort than deep and abiding trust in God. When I trust, I move more confidently through life. I feel the wind at my back and am made strong in the face of adversity. In the past, I may have felt disappointed when I misplaced my trust. The things of the world are impermanent. Even people come and go. The truth of God as the one presence and power in the universe and as my life is everlasting, unchanged, and unchanging through all the seasons of life. Even as I grow, evolve, and deepen in spiritual understanding, God is always my source the inspiration I return to again and again. My freedom to seek and discover lies in the awareness that I can always trust in God. Our Bible verse for today is from Isaiah 26.4. Trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord God you have an everlasting rock. Just a rock spinning in the 
sky where once the stars were only tiny points of light now the moon looks like it's heaven shining pearl now those stars they look like windows into another As the bumper asks, what is Dharma? So let's start there. 
So Dharma is a Sanskrit word that means purpose in life. So when we're talking about this last law, the law of Dharma says that we have taken we have taken manifestation into physical form to fulfill a purpose. So I want you to think about it just like our 12 powers. For those that are learned the 12 powers in a very traditional sense, every power leads into the next power all the way to life. Okay, so it's the same thing with these laws. Each law has a purpose on this journey, which brings us to the final purpose, which is the law of Dharma, which is us manifesting something into life that is the purpose of our life and our purpose of serving others. So you've heard the name Khalil Gibran. He wrote the book, The Prophet. And in his book, he writes, everyone has a purpose in life, a unique gift or special talent to give to others. And when we blend this unique talent with service to others, we experience the ecstasy and ex exaltation of our own spirit, which is the ultimate goal of all goals. When you work, you are flute, excuse me, you are a flute through whose heart the whispering of the hours turn to music. And when it is to work with love, it is to be waved is to weave the cloth with threads drawn from your heart even as if your beloved were to wear the cloth so again our purpose in life again we've heard this many times is to serve is to serve mankind we each have a unique gift inside ourselves you've heard me say this many times when we talk about that divine self within ourselves it is not about being better than somebody or trying to outdo somebody but it's about being the best person we can be and doing it in love so that we can serve someone else. So according to this law, you have a unique talent, a unique way of expressing it. There, are, there is something that you can do better than anyone else in the whole world. And for every unique talent and unique expression of that talent, there is also unique needs. So expressing your talents to fulfill needs creates unlimited wealth and abundance. And again, we want to stop there just to remind ourselves that when we talk about wealth and abundance, it's not always about money. It's not always about material things. A wealth of love, a wealth of health, a wealth of joy, you know, an abundance flow of happiness. So we want to keep that in mind when we talk about our purpose. How do we use this law of Dharma? How do we express our purpose in life to serve others? So when we talk about the author, which happens to be Deepak Chopra, he says, I told them, he's talking to his children, his own children. He says, and again and again, I told them there was a reason why they were here. And they had to find out what that reason was for themselves. From the age of four years, they heard this. They also taught them to meditate when they were about the same age. And I told them, I never, ever want you to worry about making a living. If you are unable to make a living when you grow up, I will provide for you, so don't worry about that. I don't want you to focus on doing well in school. I don't want you to focus on getting the best grades or going to the best colleges. What I really want you to focus on is asking yourself, how can you serve humanity? And asking yourself, what is your unique talents are? Because you have a unique talent that no one else has, you have a special way of expressing that talent and no one else has it. They ended up going to the best schools, getting the best grades, and even in college, they are unique in that they are financially self-sufficient because they are focused on what they are here to give. This then is the law of Dharma. It is when we understand that in service we give. And if we're giving service, we're open to receive. See how the flow of each one of these different talk series come into each other if you truly pay attention to it. We talked about being open, the understanding of the positive path to spiritual living. We were open to receive because we wanted to make sure that as we give, we are receiving and we're taking it in. Here's a perfect example of a spiritual teacher who has taught his children not to worry about these things, but to worry and to focus on how it is their unique talents can help serve. And in turn, all those things that most people worry about, and I'm just as guilty, came into play without them forcing it. So we go back to the law of least effort. 
And of course, there are three components to the law of Dharma. So the first component says that each of us here is here to discover our true self and to find out on our own that our true self is spiritual. That the essentially we get, we are spiritual beings taking manifestation in physical form. We are not human beings that have occasional spiritual experiences. It is the other way around. We are spiritual beings that have an occasional human experience. We've heard this over and over again. So the law of Dharma really is giving us a reminder and even a refresher on a lot of the unity trainings you've probably heard from Reverend Anne Marie, you've heard from Reverend Diane and other reverends out there talking about how we are spiritual in nature. There's a divine essence within ourselves that it is expressing in human form. And that free will that we have gives us a chance to choose what path we take and to find that path. When we put in the law of Dharma, we now have that, we know that the path we're taking is to find that unique gift that is ours to give the world. The second component of the law of Dharma is to express our unique talents. Principle number five reminds us that it's not enough to know the truth. We must live that truth. So if we discover that unique gift we have, and we're not giving it out there because of some selfishness. And when I'm talking about selfishness, it's not in a good way. I'm talking about in, I want to hoard this. I want to do this because if I'm unique and I'm this, I can do it that way. If I can't have people copying me, well, if people can copy you, there is no uniqueness in what you can do. Now, here's the thing. I want you to remember what Jesus said in his teachings. He said, you can do all the things I can do and better, which means there is a uniqueness to yourself that even if you say, hey, Rich, I want to be a speaker too, and you're a great speaker, I don't want you to copy me. Take what I've done and do better. Find your voice. And it doesn't mean only in speaking. It could be singing. It could be baking. It could be selling something. It could be anything of those things. Find an example and make it unique to you. The third component is finally in service to humanity. How can you take what your unique gift and put it out to the world? Now, yes, if you've ever done any kind of selling or you've done any kind of business study, they always say you can become rich if you find the problem in the world and solve it. But I will tell you in the same note that when you take away the rich part of it and focus on that problem and solve that problem for someone in service, in love, in joy, you'll find that riches come back tenfold. And again, not only talking about money, but the abundance of all of life which is our 12th power, life. So if you truly want to dive into the law of Dharma, there are three commitments you need to take. And if you know me well, you know my pet peeve is people who can't keep commitments. So I will tell it to you as it was said to me. Commitment is doing the thing you said you were going to do long after the feeling you set it in is gone. So let's talk about the first three commitments. First commitment is you're going to seek your higher self, which is beyond your ego, through spiritual practice. Now, again, when we talk about ego, we're talking about that individualized self, that self that's usually influenced by the outer world. It is who you became because someone else wanted you to become that way. It was who you became to fit into a world. Well, remember, again, our master teacher told us, be in this world, but do not be of the world. So we want you to focus on the spiritual part of your journey, that inner part of you, that divine part of you. Second is to commit that you're going to discover your unique talent. And finding that unique talent, you're going to enjoy yourself because the process of enjoyment occurs when you go into timeless awareness. That's when you go into a state of bliss. You've all heard the term, if you're doing the work you love and love what you're doing, it doesn't feel like work. And finally, the third commitment is I am going to ask myself how I best, how I am best suited to serve humanity. What I do love, and again, this is my ego talking, is when I say I've said things and I've learned things. And when I've said it to people like, oh, no, 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 you can't do that. No, you can't do that. Because of money, because of whatever. And I always remember this, that someone once told me, 
in regards to a business I was doing. And even though I don't heavily do that business now, I still have it in my heart. And when people ask me about it, I talk about it with such a vigor. And sometimes a sale is made, sometimes it's not, it doesn't matter. But because I still believed in it and this question that I asked myself, and it is the same question I asked myself when I became a minister. And it says, ask yourself, if money was no concern and you had all the time and money in the world, what would you do? If you would still do what you're currently doing, then you are in Dharma because you have passion for what you do. You are expressing your unique talent. Then ask yourself, how am I best suited to serve humanity? And when you answer all those questions, go out and put it into practice. It is to discover your divinity. Now, the question was posed to me one time before differently. It said, if the check stock coming in, if you were not getting paid for what you do, would you still do it? And the answer was yes. Now, I am not a senior minister anywhere. I'm not receiving a, a paycheck, so to say, or a salary, I'll say, for doing what I do here. This I do out of love, and I do it every week when, out of the equipment I have here. And I'm grateful for those who have gifted and helped that got this here. But I don't do it for a paycheck. I do it because I love doing this. I love talking to people. I love hearing people. You know, last week I talked about a young lady who said I told her something that helped her in her prayer practice. And like I said, I don't remember what I said. So obviously it was a spirit-driven thing. And I love when that happens because it tells me I'm connected, even when I feel disconnected. And me feeling disconnected allows me to plug into my human side to remind me to go back to that spiritual side. You know, I think it was Lisa Nichols who used to say, you know, it's okay to visit Victimville every so often, but it's never good, a good thing to stay there. You know, so we need to grow from that. So when it comes to the law of Dharma, make those three commitments, ask yourself those questions, and go out and find out how you can serve the world. And our discussion questions at the end will give you some more things to go on. So let's take a quick summary of the laws that we talked about. So we started off with the law of pure potentiality. And they talk about how your DNA structure is a pure example of that. It's how every cell has the same DNA in it. So it shows that in no matter what it is you're looking at, whatever in this world has energy in it. it, it shares this energy that flows in and through ourselves. Which means that as you look around my room, as I look around in other rooms, you look around your spiritual center, you look around your job, everything started as a thought, everything had a potential to be, and it was expressed into this world. We talk about the, the uh, Holy Trinity in unity, we talk about mind, idea, expression. Mind, of course, being that divine mind, God mind, expression is what we call the sun. It is the, the perfect idea of what needs to be expressed, and the Holy Spirit allows us to express it into the world. And that is our spiritual nature. It is our divinity to throw it in the world. But first, we have to realize that when we talk about God in unity, or we talk about any spiritual senses, essence out there, it is the source or energy that is in, out, through, everywhere. And it is ours to share an intention. Okay, we talked about the law of giving and the law of receiving. Giving and receiving is a circulation of that energy. So if we're sitting here like, well, this is my source, I'm taking my source and I'm keeping it and I'm never giving it away, we create a stagnant. We all know about the Dead Sea. It's a sea that goes nowhere and just died to the point that it's so ridden with salt that nothing can live in it. And it's the same way when we become hoarders, we become people who say, this is all mine, but never give out. We create that same dead space in ourselves. The law of karma. Again, making those right choices, non-judgmental doing from a place of love. The law of least effort, again, it's not about forcing the thing. 
if we've done all we can do, then be still and know. And we allow ourselves to grow in that space. The law of intention and desire, you know, two things that normally don't go together, especially with the law of detachment. It is that intention, it is that desire that we say is God knocking on our heart saying, here, this is what you've asked for. Here, this is who you truly are. Here, I'm giving you a message today to be the best you can be because there is a purpose for this and we're getting there. And then the law of detachment says, I've got this. I heard it. I know it. It's right here in my heart. It's here in my mind. The idea has hit. I now have to express it. But I'm not going to force the expression. That's the least effort. But I'm going to let go and allow it to manifest as it should and not force it anywhere. And finally, the law of Dharma says, okay, I have this idea. I now am expressing it. It is out here. But how do I take this to serve humanity in its best way? See, one of the things I learned when it comes to the law of Dharma is that doing what you love is great. Showing your uniqueness is great. But if you're not doing it from a place of love, there are things that may be holding you back. Such as you found a gift in, I don't know, anything that you're good at. But instead of doing it from a place of love, you do it from a place of ego that says, if I do this skill, whatever it is, and do it for enough people, they will like me because of what I've done, which automatically gives you a sense of lack within yourself. Do it because you're servicing someone else and saying, humanity will be better if I share this gift with someone. Me speaking with you does not mean that I have all the answers. Trust me, I don't. And that is one of Unity's greatest sayings, is that we don't have all the answers. But we're here to help you find a path. So, most important is practice that in law of Dharma. Find your purpose, serve humanity, and use all the other laws to help you get to this place. If you are a Unity student or a Unity uh, metaphysician, as we like to say, and you follow the 12 powers, use those 12 powers to get to that total image, that perfect image of the Christ self. Those five principles, very simple to know, very simple to do, very simple not to do. So it takes work. It takes commitment. Is it easy? No. Is it worth it? Yes. So that concludes our seven laws of spiritual laws of success. Next week, I will be here with uh, Freedom and Flow, which talks about us getting into the flow of things. And I said this at the beginning as well. Next week's service is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be more of a contemplative service. I'll be bringing the singing bowl with me. We're going to do some minutes of silence. And then we'll have our lesson on it. So make sure you plug in. Make sure you share with other people. We want more people to engage in finding their path. Because imagine a world where everybody strives to be their best selves, not just for themselves, but in service to humanity. Make sure you stay tuned for those discussion questions here at the end. Journal them if you're here by yourself. Discuss them with your coffee buddies. Whatever it takes, but I want to see the best in you. And as always, I love you. Nothing you can do about it. And I bid you namaste. As the divinity in me sees that big and beautiful divinity in you. And I will see you next Sunday.
Bring the light brighter, brighter. 